Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Branvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? Great, Michael. How are you? Hanging in there. Football yeah. team got eliminated, didn't they? Oh. Yeah. Heartbreaking. It was the way Brutal. they were eliminated that just breaks your heart. But you know, we're Minnesota fans. We're, we're Minnesota used to that. Vikings fans. I, yeah. I I told everybody. I'm <clears throat> even before the game started. I said I predict this game comes down to a field goal. Yeah. You were now, right. Now, it's either going to be we win by a field goal, we miss a field goal, or the other team kicks a field goal. Um, it always ends this way for Vikings, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I do look at it as uh, uh, a very positive uh, season, a step in the right direction for a lot of reasons. And when we have our Viking podcast, we'll, we'll yeah. talk more well, about let, that. Let's be honest. I don't think anybody expected them to get this far. Nope. So, so hats off well done yeah. um it wasn't it, it wasn't seahawks. major screw-ups listen if we got seahawks fans good luck to you guys because you did not play like a winning team to, to 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 advance because the other team lost the game not because you won the game doesn't doesn't bode well for you but still i would have taken a, a win's a win <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So um, with that, it's a little segue into an interesting little article I came across a couple days ago on Facebook. It's called Why Entrepreneurs Need to Be Scramblers. And it's written by somebody that you and I are huge fans of, and yep. I'm sure uh, many long. of our listeners. Yeah. A gentleman by the name of Fran Tarkington. And Fran Tarkington think without question is probably the most well-known most famous the best quarterback the minnesota vikings have ever had um yeah i mean number 10 number 10 i mean he he was he was um just an amazing quarterback for him and and why entrepreneurs need to to um be scramblers is because frank tarkington was known for scrambling um We'll put the the link to this article up in the show notes. I'm not going to read the whole thing because a lot of it is his back history. I'll read the final paragraph where it gets into the entrepreneur stuff. But Fran Tarkenton was known for scrambling. And, and yeah, listen, and for you, those for who don't know, I mean, scrambling. He he basically invented that, and the the term was kind of coined around his uh, performance because. You know, as a new team in 1961, the Minnesota Vikings had a lot of, you know, it was a ragtag bunch, and they didn't have the best offensive line. And Fran would either, you know, get killed back there, or he would improvise. And he would, scrambling, meaning that he would take a snap, and he would run from side to side, north-south, whatever it took to get away from the defense. And it wasn't necessarily designed. He just did it to survive and wait for a receiver to come open. And uh, we won a lot of uh, games against some really good teams uh, because of that improvisation. Yeah, yep. And and I like this article. I mean, the article has nothing to do with music. There's nothing to do with bands, musicians, artists, anything here. But I love articles like this that can be related to bands, musicians, artists, the music business. Um, and you, business you, you, in general, and right. business in general. You can, if if you're only limiting your, your information to articles written specifically about bands and music, you're very, you are really limiting yourself. You need to, to expand and read some general business discussions because a oh, lot yeah. of what's discussed will apply directly to you. It just won't say bands do this, but it says business do this. And yeah. I've said this before, um, a band, an uh, individual musician, you are an entrepreneur. There, there's no question about it. You are an entrepreneur. You are trying to start up a business. A band is a business. Absolutely. You're trying to get it started up, grassroots, um, you know, you don't probably have any sort of funding. You're bootstrapping it. You're borrowing money. You're you're running it. You know, an entrepreneur does things all by themselves. It's DIY. You're you're looking to be innovative and in how how to grow your business, grow your right. band. So right. anything that's discussing um, tips and tricks for entrepreneurs, you as a band or a musician should be paying attention and reading that. 
Yeah, so those who much treat their their band as a business are so much more successful because every aspect of being in a band is business related. The the key to business in any business is really simple. You need to bring in more money than you pay out. It's that simple. Now, on top of that, you can complicate it, but with a band, you need to plan things out. You need to treat it like a business. You need to keep track of your expenses and look and see where you can make money. And I think that by reading business articles, uh, you can really gain a, an upper hand on your competition. Yeah, and, and, and don't, don't, don't get scared off because you're not going to be reading articles that you need an MBA to understand what's going on. It's so many of these articles are very simple. Here's three things to do, 10 things to do. Avoid this. Um, this, this particular article, not even <clears throat> one page long, three quarters of it is Fran Tarkenton talking about who he is because there's probably p people in the business world who don't understand who he is. He talks about who he is. He talks about what scrambling was all about, why he did that. And then he ends with one paragraph. And we'll read that here. This one paragraph is what applies and you can learn from. So what he says is, that same attitude is essential as an entrepreneur, the attitude of scrambling. You come up with a plan, but no matter how much time you spend preparing, there's a good chance something will happen that you weren't prepared for. The place starts to break down. When a product doesn't sell like you expected, a marketing campaign flops, a new competitor moves into your market, you have to do something. I still scramble. And why he says I still scramble is... Because Fran Tarkin is now a very successful businessman. So I still scramble. I look for a way to get closer to my goal and find something that works. If one thing isn't working, then change it. Stay focused at all times on what's going on and keep moving. Never stand still and let the defense knock you down. Yeah. Boom. One simple paragraph, but so much great information in there that, you know, we will talk about now what that, how that relates to you. So, um, you know, you come up with a plan. I, I, I've repeated this over four or five years of Music Biz Weekly. You have to have a plan. And I'm not talking about a 20-page, well-written, deep business plan. It could be one page of bullet points that's your plan of what you want to do. Yeah. But you got to have a plan. But. And we've said this so many times before, no matter how much you have a plan, be prepared because things are going to change. And I mean, you can attest to this. In the music industry, oh, my God, things change every freaking Count day. On it. And quite often for a good reason and to benefit you. It's not, right. it's not all bad change. It's That's not right. like, oh, my tour got canceled. Now what do I do? It could right. be like, oh, you're going out on tour four weeks on your own playing theaters Tomorrow morning, you got a call that Black Sabbath wants you to open for them. That's a change in your plans, but it's a good change in your plans. Right. But you now have to scramble. What does that mean? How do you all of a sudden ramp up and, and address that? Um, right. So, yeah, you, there's going to always, always be things you aren't prepared for. And even at That's the right. smallest level, it could be the club <laughs> calling you up and saying, hey, we got to move you from Saturday night to Friday night. Right. Oh, right. oh, wait a second. My drummer has to work Friday night. Now what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the place place starts to break down. Your plans start to break down. Here, here we go. This is directly associated to music. When yeah. the product doesn't sell like you expected. Oh, my God, you spent the last 12 months recording a great CD. It sounds awesome. Beautiful packaging. It doesn't sell. Now what do you do? How can you yeah. how can you address that? What what you know the 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 entrepreneur doesn't just bury their head and go, "Well, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm just not I'm not going to pay attention to what's happening. I'm just going to keep throwing it out there." No, you've got to like go, "Why didn't this sell? Do I cut the campaign short, go back in the studio?" Is that is that our audience back there applauding you? Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. There's people outside, and I have two dogs, and they're both kind of letting me know that uh, my life's in danger. That so your life's in grave danger. I appreciate danger. that, but sorry about the barking. It'll, it'll stop in a few That's minutes. That's okay. But you're, the point you're making really comes down to, I think, a lot of it is you know, being nimble enough to improvise. 
And one of the things that my business partner and I did when we struck out on our own is we went and asked people in business that we respect that have started their own business and we sat down with them. You know, nobody wants to give you a job, but everybody wants to give you advice, right? Yep. So we sat down with these guys and said, you know, what were your challenges? What, what are some of the struggles that you had starting your own business? And we learned a lot from that. But the thing that came away from that is that most of the people we talked to started one business and ended up with another. And you can even see that with the, you know, the Steve Jobs and David Geffens of the world too. A lot of them kind of thought their path was going to go one way, but they were nimble enough to kind of go with the successes that they had. And, you know, it's a path. It's a journey. You don't just have a goal and then just go right for that goal. Sometimes, you know, you, you vary depending on the circumstances. So I think with, with our business, we thought it was going to be one thing. And then the market kind of dictated that there was another need that we decided to go with. And I think it's the same thing when you're talking about, you know, artists. I did a photo shoot yesterday with this really great artist, uh, Matt Kelsch. And, you know, he played 170 dates last year. He thought the road to his success would possibly be, you know, a lot of, you know, live performances. But he's finding that two things. One, that it's not just the quantity, it's the quality. But more importantly, some of his recordings he did with a full band and, and they were very well produced. But the ones that were stripped down, where it was just him and his acoustic guitar, are actually doing much better. And that's what I'm talking about. You think you have a, your plan in place. And listen, we both agree that there should be a plan. But you have to be nimble enough, like Fran tar- talks about, you know, taking off, scrambling, looking for another direction. You have to be nimble enough when things aren't going right to kind of assess that and maybe revise your plan. There, there, there's, a, there's a big term in business right now used to describe that called pivoting, which basically means you start your business going one direction and you pivot and go a completely different direction because you recognized a different opportunity. And, and you were sort of pointing an example in, in music there. You start out as a four-piece band. That was your full intention. You and your buddies are going out as a band. Uh, A year later, you're looking back going, you know what? People want me. They don't want the rest of the band. They want me as a solo performer. I've I've, I've turned down more offers for solo shows than we've accepted for full band shows. That's something that you have to be observant enough to pay attention to. Yeah, it's it's not a um, easy to make decision. It's not something you w- were wishing to happen. But a successful entrepreneur looks at that and says, hmm, if I'm going to be a successful business, yeah, maybe I need to turn left here. And turning yeah. left means going to the other three guys and saying, I'm sorry, all the best to you but I'm going to become a solo performer. And now yep. you, you know, you've just pivoted. You've looked at um, a change in your plans. You've made, you've scrambled basically. And now you're off and running in a different direction. Yeah. What, what, what I see a lot are people who are so stubborn and so set and so blinders on that. It's like, I will be, we will be a band. I don't care. And 20 years from now, if we're still struggling, we're still going to be a band. Well, you know, that you might have passed up how many opportunities for success for your own career. And, and it's again, it's tough. It's tough for a business to say, you know what, we're no longer going to be producing product X and we're going to lay off our entire staff because we're now going to produce product Y because that's right. what people like and bring a whole new staff in. Right. But right. that's what an experienced, skillful entrepreneur is capable of doing and will keep their career always moving forward, always running forward. Yeah, and I think that happens a lot in any business. Um, But again, it's the music business. It is a business. Um, I wonder, you know, I think we both know uh, certain artists that are good at 
changing with the times, changing their direction, pivoting. Um, what, what are some of the uh, some of the artists that you can think of that have made a good transition or a good uh, pivot over the years? Well, l- listen. I mean, let's 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 be just straight up and honest. Any band that's been around longer than one year, if you've been around five years, ten years, forty years, your band has changed direction, changed musical styles. You could go. You could pick anybody from Queen, Rolling Stones, Kiss, U2, any big artist that's seen generation after generation, and you could sit back and go, "Wow, I thought that's when Queen was going disco. Wow, I thought that's when the Rolling Stones were going pop. You know, I that's yeah. when that's when that's when U2 went Zoo TV. You <laughs> know, a Pop Mart, whatever that was. Sure. It was." You know, every artist has done that, but they haven't been afraid to do it, and they've also come back. Yeah, you know, Madonna's if, if, a good example. Oh, Madonna! How many how many different image changes, sound styles? You know, you name it. Have they done? And and why I say, if you've only been around a year, you haven't been around long enough to see styles change. Tastes haven't changed, but if you've been around ten years, twenty years, forty years countless styles and tastes have come and gone and it's scary i mean it's, it's, it's scary you take a chance yeah. i mean look at ministry you know the way that they they started and where they ended up um sometimes it's it's really scary to do that but i think to survive in in business you have to see what's going on around you and not to take away from building a plan because I'm right there with you. I think that you definitely need to build a plan and reference that plan and talk about that plan. But as things move, you look at what things are you succeeding at. For example, um, I advise clients on social media. And it's a perfect analogy because with social media, it's, it's not that hard once you've got a plan in place. Um, it's, it's a matter of, yes, there's certain days that work a little bit better, but that varies. There's certain times that work a little bit better, but what it basically boils down to is you, there's some tactics that you try and then you see what works and you do more of that. And then you look at what you're doing that isn't working and you do less of that and you kind of fine tune it as you go. And pretty soon it gets better and better. And I think that's the same thing that we're saying about when you have this plan, look at the things that you're doing well, look at the things that are working, and do more of that. It, it sounds obvious, but sometimes it's not. You know, what, what, what to me is the most obvious thing is you can have the most detailed plan put together by the biggest team of experts but there is one thing that I can guarantee you will always happen. Things will change. Change is always a guarantee. What changes, you won't know. But you you will never have a plan that works from day one to day six months and nothing changed. That it worked exactly as you spec'd it out and released and everything will never happen. That's a promise. And the way you are successful is are you willing to accept change? And a lot of people aren't. Change is scary because, again, it could be something great. I mean, you're you're fine playing to, um, you know, 200 people at your local bar, playing up and down the West Coast, but all of a sudden Black Sabbath says we want you to open for 12 dates on the West Coast, and now you're playing in front of 20,000 people. That's freaking scary. Yeah great opportunity but really scary are you prepared for that sort of change and how do you how you know in in my mind the sign of success is going to be the person who says i'm taking that change i'm plowing straight into it i'm going i'm going to tackle it the best i can the person who says no i don't want that okay you you've basically just put these the spotlight on you to say I'm afraid to succeed. I don't want yeah. these these great opportunities to to, yeah. to come my way. Right. Um, it comes down to sometimes who wants it worse. And I know that's kind of a sports analogy, but it's the same in in music. You can tell those people who are hungry that will just do 
whatever it takes. They'll play the shows, whether some of those shows are good shows or bad shows, but they'll continue to get better. They'll continue to improve. They'll look for every opportunity they possibly can. And that hunger is infectious and, and people can see that. But I totally get the fact that people are inherently afraid of things they don't understand. And change is scary. But I think that's what Fran Tarkington preaches is that you, you have to embrace that change and in, embrace the unknown and embrace those things that scare you if you're going to really be successful. Yeah, I mean, as a quarterback, his plan is that his offensive line does not break down and gives him all the protection he needs to stay in the pocket and throw a successful pass. The change that he's not counting on is the offensive line breaking down on the right side and the defense coming crashing through, and he's got this 300-pound lineman barreling down trying to take his head off. Yeah. Now what do now you what do? do? Now what do you do? Do you just say, oh, well, let's just end this play and start over again? Or do you run and try and make something out of it? Um, or do you stand in the pocket because that was the original plan? Yeah, you're afraid to move. Great. I'm afraid to move. Because if I move, I might get hit somewhere else. Well, you know what? You're guaranteed to get hit if you stay here. Yeah. Um, you know, he, Fran goes on and talks about a new competitor moves into your market. A new competitor is another band. Whether there's a new band coming to town that's starting to play in your market, whether it's a new band that's been formed, um, you could even look at new musicians as competitors. Maybe you've got a bass player who just is afraid to do this change, to, 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 to scramble. But there's a bass player across town in another band who you've seen is just like, God, this guy's just got the attitude. I can just see the hunger in his eyes. You know what? You want that competitor on your team. Again, it's like a football team. They're going to trade to get the guy that fits their team best. You want the best, best player. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. And, and that might mean you've got to scramble, fire your base player, and bring a new guy in because the new yeah. guy's got the attitude that fits everything you're going to do. Yeah. Um, so, again, you know, a compet don't, don't sit here and go, what are you talking about new competitors? Oh, you got a ton of competitors out there if you're a musician. ton yeah. of competitors. If you're not going to step up and take that opportunity, another musician will. Yeah. And, and another thing that's, you know, causing a lot of fear today that you and I deal with every day is just the way the market's moving. It went from physical to download, and now it's, it's ramping up with streaming. The market is scrambling. It is, and the it's business scary itself for a lot of people, scrambles. Right? Yep. You know, you talk to managers, and, and I have this conversation daily where I'll talk with an artist manager and they're like, let's, let's talk about streaming. I, I need to know, you know, what do you think about where the market's going or what do you think about, you know, uh, the cuts that people are getting and, you know, things that we've talked about on this show. You know, how do you get into playlists? What's a good playlist strategy? You know, how do I deal with these streaming services? And I think that's really horrifying for more so for maybe older established artists who are used to the old way that we used to do the business. For some of those people, it's, it's really scary. Some of the younger folks, you know, like Matt that I mentioned, you know, from the photo shoot yesterday, he's embraced it and he gets it and he understands YouTube. He understands, you know, um, the streaming services as well as downloads and physical. And there's a place for all of that stuff. But I think it's, particularly scary today for some of these new or not new the older established artists to pivot yep. uh, to, to use your phrase um, from the old world of selling cds and making a lot of money from that and doing kind of album tour album tour to a, a more disposable kind of maybe it's singles maybe it's eps but it's digital and there's so much you know, on the streaming side that causes fear. Yep, yep, yeah. You know, when, when, when the business is scrambling as much as you, the professional entrepreneur, is scrambling, now there's change everywhere. And maybe you're just ready to embrace this change and then the industry changes and takes a right <laughs> turn. And now you're like, now what do I do? Yeah. Uh, so, it, it, you know, even more so in the music industry, yeah, you've got to be... You've got to be so open to change and being able to scramble. He goes on to say here, you know, I look for a way to get closer to my goal and find something that works. And 
And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. You set a carrot out there in front of you. What is your goal? My goal is to tour the western United States. All right, how are you getting there? Well, our first goal is we're going to tour it on our own. Pivot time. You don't have the funds to do that. Now how do you do it? Can you team up with three other bands and split costs? Can you hit family members up to invest in your business? You know, family members loaning you money is an angel investor. That, yeah. and, and that's true. An angel investor in entrepreneur world is getting money from friends and family. And, and that's that, as old as the music business, That right? happens all the, the Beatles time. Beatles had that. I yeah. Mean, come on. So, so don't, don't yeah. feel bad that you've got to go hit friends and family up for money because that's the way many, many startups in Silicon Valley get started. Mm-hmm. They get $100,000, quarter million dollars from friends, family, maxing out credit cards, everything else. Angel investors get them off the ground. Yeah. So find that goal, and you just got to keep scrambling and hoping that you're moving towards that goal. Yeah, maybe you moved a little to the right, but if you're moving to the right but still moving forward, you're still moving towards that goal. Right, and if your sales, you know, uh, on let's say the download services are are falling, you know, get involved with playlisting, get involved with streaming services, and really maximize your merch sales at every show that you do. Make sure that it's it's there, it's available, it's competitively priced, that it's something that your fans actually want. Um, there's a lot to be said for having a good plan when it comes to merch, as yep. I know you know. Yep. Um, he goes on to say, if one thing isn't working, then change it. Stop doing the same thing over and over and over. Especially if it's not working. If it's never worked, if it hasn't worked for anybody else, you know, it, it, there's countless articles of why do you go into the studio, record a whole album, and then release an album? That's the way the industry's always done it. Maybe you need to change the way you do yeah. it and go into Doesn't the studio. Doesn't mean it's right for now. Record, an, uh, record 24 songs and release one song every week for the next 24 weeks. You don't have to release a whole album. I mean, there's no rules. You could you could record two albums worth of material and end up releasing it as four EPs. You could have an exclusive for your live shows. You could do EPs. There's so many things that you can do. I think we're only constrained by our own imaginations sometimes. And I think a lot of times you hear this in business, well, that's the way we've always done it. Well that that's that's standing that in the that's it. standing in the pocket. When everything is collapsing around and you and, getting re- hit. and refusing to move. Listen, standing in the pocket of the music industry, sitting here and saying, well, we've always released an album once a year, and then we toured in support of it, and then we went back in the studio. That's the way it's always been done. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and your offensive line is collapsing around you as this is happening every single time you do it, yet somehow you think the next time it will work. Yeah. It's time it to scramble a bit, yeah. go the other direction, stop doing what you've always done, change, but keep moving forward. I couldn't agree with you more. It reminds me of, you know, right around 1998, um, the original Napster, you know, started getting very popular. And I remember sitting in, in my office at Universal and discussing it with uh, other executives. And it fundamentally changed so much about the industry because now people people could basically you know not only download and you know steal music but they could share it so easily and that was a big pivot moment uh for the music industry and i think that happens a lot with bands as well you know people are used to selling you know cd's on you know, on Amazon or, you know, Tower Records or, you know, Warehouse or, or whatnot. Well, what happens when Tower and Warehouse went away? You know, what's happening now with download sales as they decline and people move to streaming? It's another one of those pivot moments. And if you're aware of it, and especially early, and again, you talked about, you know, keeping up on business news, which is pretty easy to do if you have a smartphone or a computer, which most people do to you know set up google alerts or just check certain websites 
by doing that, you'll be on the cutting edge of what's happening in business and you'll see what's happening with these companies. And, you know, that there's your pivot moment. Yep. You know, he three words he kind of ends with here. Never stand still. And getting back he to never did, right? Yeah, getting back to your discussion about Napster, you know, there's always been that argument that at least externally because you, you, you've talked about what was going on internally in the business world, but externally, it sure looked like the music business was standing still. It did. While it downloading that happened. Big ship. Yeah. And, and, what, and, and they didn't pivot. They didn't move. They didn't scramble. Not fast enough. Not fast enough. Never stand still and let the defense knock you down. Music industry shouldn't have stood still and let Napster come in and knock them down. Don't stand still and let the band across town coming out of a garage and you're going, oh, it's just a bunch of kids. Those kids in three months could be taking all of your gigs. You know, yeah. so yeah. that, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Don't, don't get so caught up in I'm the best guitar player in town. I'm the best songwriter. We're the best band. You know what? There's historically, there's been a lot of best bands. And there's always somebody ready to knock you down a notch. Yeah. I would say even, you know, do your homework. You know, to use the analogy of Fran, I mean, he spent so much time watching film of the people he was going up against. Yeah. Well, check out what is your competition. Go, go to the shows of your competitors. Yes. Look you at might what hate, they're doing. You look may at their hate website. their music. It's yeah, not about it liking matter. their music. You're going to the show to see what they're doing. How do they interact on stage? What are they doing off stage? What does their merch stand look like? What What's their are, socials look what like? What are they selling? How much are they selling it for? What are they doing on their socials? Yeah. Look at all of that stuff. Find some big successful bands. Follow them. Study them. Steal Listen, their bass player. <laughs> you hate you you may you may hate Justin Bieber. Study what he's doing. Yeah. How and can you apply those, that to you? A, you know, if you're a hard rock band you should know what's going on with that scene in your area. If you're a singer-songwriter, you should be out checking out the local singer-songwriters and seeing what are they doing right, what are they doing that's maybe falling a little flat. And to your point, what's their merch look like? What are their socials look like? Look at their website. Look at what they're doing you know, online. Are they doing anything that's kind of cutting edge? You know, um, somebody told me one time that they're, you know, it's always a stupid idea until somebody does it, you right. know, and, and I would just encourage you to get out there and, and, you know, see what kind of stupid ideas are out there. Don't be afraid to borrow ideas. You know, I would not encourage you to steal an idea note for note, lick for lick, graphic for graphic, but if they came out with an interesting colored t-shirt with an interesting design, take that, go back and go, how can we make this our own? Yeah. There's a great quote from uh, Pete Townsend where somebody says he's he's stealing your act and Pete Townsend says he's not stealing my act he's doing my act and and I love that quote I mean look there's not a lot new in the music business there's it's really more about your performance your hunger your passion the way that you deliver it nobody sounds like you nobody looks like you you know be you but look at what other people are doing that's successful and see what you can learn to uh, make your business successful. Yep. So in, in the end, don't be afraid to scramble. You're going to have to scramble if you're going to succeed. If you, if you stand still, you're gonna you're, get flat. you are going to get flattened, <laughs> run over, and you're going to be in, the, Down in the rearview mirror of somebody else who just passed you by. Yeah, we've seen it a million times. A million times, it will continue to happen. You know, yeah. Scrambling is what's going to set you apart from everybody else. Don't be that guy. Be Fran Tarkington. Be Fran Tarkington. There run. 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 And keep running <laughs> until you get to the goal line. Exactly. And if you get knocked down, get back up get again. Get back up and w get knocked down again and keep doing it and keep doing it. You know, yeah. now granted, Fran Tarkington or the Vikings have been to four Super Bowls and haven't won any of them, yeah. but they keep but, trying. <laughs> but he, as a passer, you know, has held pretty much every record in the NFL. And he's somebody that people kind of discounted because of his scrambling. But yeah, uh, I think it's a, a good life lesson there. It's, it's a huge life lesson. It applies directly to you guys. And, and 
study entrepreneurs. That's all I can say. Go out and study entrepreneurs. Read Entrepreneur Magazine. Find some entrepreneur websites. Follow some of the well-spoken entrepreneurs that are out there. Um, you're going to learn a lot, and you can get some really interesting ideas that you can make your own. Absolutely. So there you go. Till next week, we got a special guest joining us next week. So, good one. That's it. Later. <laughs>